Are you getting started with learning RxJS operators? In this video we will not only cover the basic operators, but we will also see how to read the documentation efficiently to learn new operators on demand. Here we go! We will cover the most important and most frequently used operators in this video. We will have a look at their documentation as well. This way you will be able to learn further operators you need on your own. Before we start reading the docs, let's have a look at marble diagrams first, because those are quite important to understand what the operator does. This explanation of marble diagrams can be found in the documentation. Here we see a source observable and the time goes from left to right and over the span of this time values are emitted. Then we see a bar, it means that the observable is completed. In the middle we see this box which contains the operator that is applied to this source observable. The output observable is listed on the button. The cross means that this observable throws an error. With this knowledge we can start with the first operator. Let's have a look at off. Off is one of the most basic operators. It converts its arguments into a sequence. The values are emitted synchronously. Okay, here we see our first marble diagram. The operator produces an observable that emits the values that were passed into this operator and then it directly completes. The next operator we want to cover is the from operator. From takes an observable input and turns it into an observable. An observable input can be something like another observable or a promise or maybe even simply an array. Speaking of arrays, let's have a look at this marble diagram. In this example, the from operator takes an array and produces its output observable. This example is equivalent to the off operator but with an array as argument. As we can see, the values of the observable input are flatly emitted by the resulting output observable. Another basic operator is the defer operator. Defer is very similar to from. The difference is that it takes in a factory function to produce the observable input. As we know, observables are lazy. We can use this for example to create observables from promises. Promises are not lazy, so we have to wrap them to mirror this behavior for observable. Let's have a look at the map operator. You may know map from a functional context. For example, arrays have a map method on them, so you can map the single values to some other values. This is basically what this operator does. In this marble diagram, for example, we see how values can be multiplied with 10 using this operator. Of course, our map callback can return values of another type. The resulting observable will be of this new type then. Another operator that you should know is the filter operator. As with the map operator, you should be familiar with this if you do functional programming. Filter simply allows a subset of values to pass. In this marble diagram, all even values are filtered out and we are left with the odd values that are emitted by the output observer. Sometimes we want to do side effects like logging or storing some values in local storage or stuff like that. So for this we can use the tab operator. Tab takes in an observer or a next function. The resulting observable will mirror the source observable. So we don't need to return any value and we simply can do our side effects with the values that come in. Since we can pass in an observer, we can also react to errors or to the completion of the source observable. Especially in asynchronous programming, we have a lot of errors that can occur. How do we handle those? One way to do this is using the catch error operator. Catch error takes in a callback to provide an observable input. The parameters of this callback are the error itself and the source observable. So if you simply want to retry, for example, you can return the source observable. But of course you can provide any observable you want for recovery. This is how to read this marble diagram. The source observable emits values and then errors. Catch will react to this error by calling our callback, which returns its 
observable input and turning this observable input into a new observable. The values of both observables are simply merged into the output observable. Those operators are the most basic ones from my experience. To get a better overview over all those operators, let's have a look at the categories of operators. Here we have the creation operators. We already saw three of them. We have off, defer and from, for example. But as we can see, there are a lot of operators that can produce observables from scratch. Then we have the join creation operators. Those are operators that merge observables together. Join creation operators take in multiple observables and turn them into one. There are many ways to transform the observable values and here we have the list of transformation operators. Next up we have filtering operators. We already saw the filter function. So far we only covered the map operator from this category. We already covered the filter function and the matching category is the filtering operators category. Here you find a lot of operators that can filter out values, but some filtering operators can produce output observables that complete before the source observable. Then we have the join operators. This is basically an extension of the join creation operators category. Then we have the multicasting operators. Those operators turn an observable into a multicasted observable. In the error handling operator category, we see that we only have three operators that support us with handling errors, but those are more than sufficient. Basically, you can do everything you need with catch error. Then we have some utility operators like tap. There are some more operators that are quite frequently used. I will leave you a link in the description to my blog post where you can find those operators. I think as an advanced RxJS programmer, you should know about those two. Just recently, I discovered a nice tool in the documentation from RxJS. It's called the Operator Decision Tree. In this decision tree, you can simply click through and pick the operator that suits your needs. So definitely check this out as well. In this video, you got to know some operators and you learned how to read the documentation efficiently. If you want more content like this, make sure you have subscribed to this channel. I wish you happy coding and as an awesome developer, never stop learning. Thank you for watching and have a great day.